Hello, welcome to Lotus Yoga Online. My name is Misty, and today I'm going to lead you through a Baptiste Power Vinyasa class. Let's get started. Child's Pose. Take up space on your mat. Really utilize the entire surface, maybe even beyond the surface of your mat if that feels good. Move your knees wide, bring your big toes to touch. And draw your sit bones back towards your heels as you reach your fingertips towards the top of your mat. Take a breath in through your nose, maybe the most conscious breath of your day so far. Open your mouth, sigh that breath out. And give up what you must to really get present to your practice and to this space you're in this evening. Move into your ujjayi breath. Begin to create a balance with your inhales and your exhales through your nose. From this very first pose, generate a little fire, a little tapas through your ujjayi breath. And create a restriction in the back of your throat so it becomes audible. On your next inhale, can you lengthen through your side body just a little bit more? And as you exhale, really melt down towards your mat. Let your chest and shoulders surrender to the pose. On your next inhale, move up into a tabletop position. Stay grounded through your hands, stack your shoulders on top of your wrists. And again, take up space with your hands. Really stretch out through your fingertips. You can press the tops of your feet into your mat or tuck your toes. But press your hips right on top of your knees. And extend your gaze, your drishti, out towards the top of your mat. Create more space between your shoulders and your ears. Establish your foundation, your hands, feet, and core. Really feel the power of pressing into your mat and drawing up into your center line. And then move through some cat and cow for a few breaths. As you inhale, dip your belly down, look up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, tuck your chin to your chest, press your thoracic spine to the ceiling. Connect this movement with your breath. No rush, really fully inhaling and exhaling. Finding the pause in between before you move into that next position. Taking time to notice in these first few movements how your body's feeling today, how it's showing up on your mat. Two more rounds. You can add some movement side to side or with your head or neck. Whatever feels good. Begin to get a little curious in your practice and explore. And come back to your tabletop. Go ahead and tuck your toes if they're not already. Stay in this tabletop position. Just lift your knees up off of your mat to a hover. Really beginning to draw thighs and core into center line. Press down into your mat or blocks so your shoulders begin to press up to the ceiling. Inhale, lengthen the crown of your head to the top of your mat. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pedal out your feet. Again, invitation to take some movement here for a few breaths. You might lift one leg at a time. You might twist and reach for a bind on the outside of 
one shin or the other. Whatever movement you take, tune in and make it on purpose. Land in stillness in your downward facing dog. Make sure your index fingers are pointing at 12 o'clock and you might have a slight angle out on the rest of your fingers. So you begin to externally rotate your shoulders. Soften like air through your knees. Really drive your chest back towards your thighs. And draw your inner ankles to the back of the room. Press your outer ankles down towards your mat. One more full ujjayi inhale here. On your exhale, open your mouth, lion's breath out. Move right back into your ujjayi breath. Look forward to your hands. Tiptoe your toes all the way up to your wrist creases for ragdoll. Place your feet at 12 o'clock at hips width distance. And either grab opposite elbows or just hang heavy. You can let your fingertips drop to the ground if that's more comfortable. You can bring a generous or a micro bend to your knees. Maybe you just explore between those two places. And we call this a practice because we work with whatever is happening or is present on any given particular day. Allow the crown of your head to drop down heavy towards your mat. Shake your head, no. Nod your head, yes. And perhaps here in this forward fold, in this unassuming place, set an intention for your practice. Maybe it's as simple as being a yes for any invitation I might offer or being a yes to really listening to what your body needs today, even if it's different than something I might offer. You'll tell your feet to touch. Inhale, lift up to a flat spine. Draw the tips of your shoulder blades in towards your spine. Press them into your body. Extend your gaze out past the top of your mat. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift up to a flat spine. Really root into the four corners of both feet. Feel your legs begin to activate. Draw the pit of your belly up to your spine. With that engagement, lift all the way up to standing. Urdhva Hastasana, extended mountain pose. Reach your fingertips to the ceiling. On your exhale, cactus your arms. Draw your thoracic spine in. Inhale, reach up, lengthen. On your exhale, bring your hands to heart center. We'll open class with the unifying sound of Om. Start with a breath in through your nose. Open up, sigh that breath out. Inhale for Om. Reach your fingertips tall. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Halfway lift, breathe in. Plant your hands, step back to a high plank position. You wanna bring your pelvis to neutral here. Always an option to drop your knees down to your mat to remain in integrity in the shape of the pose. If your knees are lifted, really press out through your heels and press equally down through your hands. Inhale, extend your gaze to the top of your mat. Exhale, bend your elbows to 90 degrees, low push-up. Upward facing dog, press into the tops of your feet. Downward facing dog, roll over your toes. Move your sit bones up towards the ceiling. 
three ujjayi inhales and exhales. Right. Re-establish your foundation over and over again, an opportunity to begin again with the pillars of this practice. Inhale, look to your hands. Exhale, move your feet to meet your hands. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way up, extended mountain. Take your gaze tall. Forward fold, empty your lungs. Halfway lift. Plant your hands, Chaturanga Dandasana. Move through your high to low push up. Empty your lungs as you lower. Upward facing dog, roll your upper arm bones back. Downward facing dog, roll your chest to your thighs. Two Ujjayi breath cycles. Move your gaze to the back of your mat while you're in your downward facing dog. On your third inhale, look forward, bend your knees, move your feet there, halfway lift, forward fold, extended mountain pose. Really root into your feet. See if you can extend your gaze back towards the back wall, fold on your exhale, halfway lift, inhale. Chaturanga Dandasana, flow like water through your Chaturanga, up dog. You'll land back in downward facing dog. And if at any point you feel like you want to move straight from your high plank to your down dog, that's always an option. One more sun salutation, A, bend your knees, look forward. Step or hop your feet to your hands. Halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Extended mountain pose, Urdhva Hastasana, get big. Forward fold, empty. Halfway lift, Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Right back to your Ujjayi breath if it has fallen away or perhaps shortened as you've begun to flow. This is your opportunity. Recreate, regenerate that equal long breath in through your nose and out through your nose. Look forward to your hands, move your feet there. Halfway lift, forward fold. Utkatasana chair pose. You can bring your big toes to touch or leave your feet at hips width distance. If your toes are touching, put a little space between the back of your heels. Lift the front of your pelvis as your tailbone descends. Lift and spread all 10 toes. Really move or shift your weight back into your heels. Yeah, nice, spark out through your fingertips. No matter where your hands are, make them active. Draw the pit of your belly in and up, sit three inches lower. One more, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift, Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Inhale, your right leg long behind you, three point. Flex your toes back towards your shin. Square your right hip back down to your mat. Warrior one, step your right foot to your right thumb. Pivot your back foot down to an angle. You might find that you can make some adjustments from where you landed, so just kind of notice if you've got a little more space, you can walk your right toes forward and bend deeper into your right knee. Move towards stacking your right knee on top of your right ankle. And drive into the blade edge of your back foot. Inhale, look up past your fingertips. Exhale, plant your hands. Chaturanga Dandasana, option to float your right leg at a hover. Upward facing dog. 
downward facing dog. Inhale your left foot high, three point, warrior one. When you come up, take a moment, bring attention back down to your foundation in your feet. See if you can press all four corners of both feet into your mat. Right, so begin to create a little lift in the arch of your back foot. Press in to your feet, draw up into your center line, spark out through your fingers. One more breath in, lengthen. Exhale, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Full ujjayi inhale. Open up, lion's breath out. Bend your knees, look forward, move your feet to your hands. This time moving one breath per pose, halfway lift, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Utkatasana, one breath, fold, empty, lift, inhale, chaturanga dandasana, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, right side, warrior one, use your full inhale to reach up and maybe back so that you've got a little back bend, exhale, chaturanga, Inhale, upward facing dog. Lift your thighs up off your mat. Downward facing dog. Left side, warrior one. Root down, rise up. Chaturanga, ground down like earth. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Three ujjayi inhales and exhales. If you need to release a little bit of heat or story, by all means, open your mouth, sigh it out, whatever it takes to give up what you must. Lift your right leg up to the ceiling. Draw your knee to your nose, cheetah, exhale. Inhale, three point, extend your right leg long. Exhale, hug in, cheetah. Inhale, three point. Exhale, step your right foot forward, crescent lunge. Option to drop your left knee down to the mat or leave it lifted in space. If you're staying in high crescent lunge, really pull the heel of your left foot right up on top of the ball of your left foot, yes. Notice if there is a deep sway in your lower back, can you lift the front of your pelvis up towards your belly button? Bring your hands to heart center, twist right, catch your left elbow on the outside of your right thigh. Every inhale, lengthen from your back heel out through the crown of your head. Every exhale, draw your belly into your spine and open up through your chest. Call on your breath to keep you steady. Inhale, crescent lunge to the center. Exhale, open up warrior two. So similar to that first warrior one, notice if you feel like you've got a little more space to come deeper into your front knee, walk your toes closer to the top of your mat. And then bring equal weight into both feet. So I have a tendency to shift more weight into my front foot. See if you can really balance the weight in between all four corners of your feet. And then press your right knee over towards your right pinky toe. Start to open into your hip a little more. Extended side angle. 
Land your right hand on the inside or outside of your right foot or your right forearm on your right thigh. Go ahead and reach your left fingertips to the back of the room and then circle them around the front side of your body. Peel open. Now notice what's happened in your right knee. Have you come out of your 90 degree bend? If so, bring yourself back in. Peel your left shoulder back. Inhale. As you exhale, come back up. Warrior two, press into your feet. Reach back, peaceful warrior, inhale. Chaturanga Dandasana, cartwheel your hands to your mat. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Big inhale through your nose. Open up, sigh it out, lion's breath out. Lift your left leg to the ceiling, three point. Cheetah, exhale. Inhale, three point, stretch it long. Exhale, cheetah. One more time, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, crescent lunge. As you breathe in, reach your fingertips to the ceiling. Again, bring your pelvis to neutral. So just notice where you may or may not be dumping some extra weight. Draw your front ribs together, expand through your mid back. Bring your hands to Anjali Mudra, twist left. If you're in high crescent lunge, activate your back leg if it started to lose a little bit of its integrity. Right, press the back of your knee to the ceiling. Use your bind or your arms parted to really peel your heart center up towards the ceiling. Inhale, crescent lunge to the front of your mat. Exhale, warrior two, open up. So we didn't do it on the first side, but sometimes for my first warrior two, I really like to play and flow a little bit between a bent knee and a straight knee just to see if there's a little more space. So try that on. As you inhale, straighten your front knee and then exhale, sink back in towards 90 degrees. Do it one or two more times and then just notice when you land back in your warrior two, if there's a little more space there. Tuck your sit bones underneath your pelvis. Draw your thoracic spine in, extended side angle. And take that circle with your lifted arm, if that felt good on the first side, to expand into a little more length. Stack your left knee on top of your left ankle. Root into the blade edge of your back foot. One more, inhale, lengthen. Warrior two, exhale. Peaceful warrior, extend open through your left side body. Exhale, chaturanga dandasana or high plank to down dog. Yogi's choice. Meet yourself where you are today. Honor your intention. Breathe in. Open up, sigh out. Bend your knees, look forward. Step or float your feet to your hands. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Utkatasana. Good. 
Today, reach your hands straight out from your shoulders so your arms are parallel with the floor. And draw your shoulders back towards the room behind you. Really integrate your shoulders back into your back body. And pretend like you're squeezing a block in between your hands. Be that active in your hands. Sit a little lower in your sit bones. Bring your hands to heart center, twist right. Three of your breath cycles here to really create a fuller expression in this pose. That can look like sitting your hips a little lower. It can look like parting your arms and taking up a little more space. Draw your left knee and hip back. Extend the crown of your head forward. After your third exhale, come back up to center chair. Lift and spread all 10 toes. Bring your hands to Anjali Mudra, twist left. Your three breaths. Right? And notice, recognize when you're given the opportunity to be in control of the time of the breath, is your tendency to rush the process or to hang out a little longer. Come back to center. Forward fold. Padagustasana, walk your feet to hips with distance. Take your peace sign fingers, wrap them around your big toes. Inhale, lift to a flat spine. Exhale, melt your chest to your thighs. I often find at this point in my practice that some tension has crept back in. So if you're feeling that in your shoulders, go ahead, shake and nod your head. Maintain your breath. As much as your breath can create tapas and heat, it can also bring ease and space. Parahastasana, take the palms of your hands, place them underneath the soles of your feet. Inhale, lift towards the flat spine. Exhale, fold. If your hamstrings are especially on fire right now, maybe too much on fire, bend your knees. You can bend them as little or as much as you'd like. And work the vinyasa, work the flow in the small ways, in the stillness. Right? Vinyasa is not always full expression or most advanced posture. Crow. Remove your hands from under your feet. Plant them on your blocks or your mat at shoulders width distance. And again, really take up space, just like you did in your child's pose and your down dog. Take up more surface area with your hands. Draw your knees to the backs of your triceps as close as your armpits as you can get them. Pull your heels up to your sit bones. Move your gaze to the top of your mat. Take another full breath in here from skin to muscle to bone. Hug in. Shoot back chaturanga or land your feet and step back. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Inhale. Sigh out. Look to your hands, tiptoe your feet up to your hands for a malasana squat. So take your feet wide on your mat, like as wide as your mat. 
toes pointing out. And drop your sit bones down. So your knees are tracking in the same direction as your big toes. Yeah, and a block underneath your sit bones is a great modification here. You can use your elbows to really press your knees apart, get a little deeper into the hip opening. Lift your sternum towards your thumbs. Really focus on your drishti here. Notice if this is a place where you want to wander with your eyes. Hold your gaze steady. Inhale, lengthen from your sit bones up through the crown of your head. Draw into your foundation, hands, feet, core. On your next inhale, press into your feet, rise all the way up to standing. Heel to your feet to hips width distance, release your hands, samastitihi. You can bring your big toes to touch or stay at hips width distance in your feet. Inhale, roll your shoulders up towards your ears, exhale, move them back. Chair. Eagle, Garudasana, pull your right knee to your chest, cross it over your left leg. Wrap your right arm under your left arm or grab opposite shoulders. You can also work your hands at heart center. Lift your right hip up in line with your left. Put more space between your forearms and your face. Expand into your upper back. Unwind chair. Right into Garudasana on the second side. Left knee draws to chest, cross it over. Left arm under right for the bind. Draw your thoracic spine in behind you. Draw the pit of your belly in and up. Embrace the wobble, the shake, the imbalance. Utkatasana. Samastitihi, stand up. Inhale, your right knee to your chest. Exhale, airplane. Dekasana, reach your fingertips back to the back of the mat. Rotate your right pinky toe down towards your mat. Really square your hips down to your mat. Bring up dog to your chest. Half moon, release your left fingertips to the floor or a block. Reach your right fingertips up to the ceiling. Stack your hips. Extend your lifted leg like you're gonna plant it on the wall behind you. Even if it's an invisible air wall. Begin to work your gaze, your drishti, up to your lifted fingertips. Yeah, be willing to come apart. It's not about staying in the pose or avoiding that falling out. It's about seeing where your growth is. Come back to standing, samastitihi. Shake it out. Ground down like earth. Pull your left knee into your chest. Dekasana. Option to bring your hands together at your lower back and take a bind. Sometimes I really like this option to bring more uplift to my chest and a little more stretch to my shoulders. 
Soften your standing leg. Bring a micro bend to your knee. One more. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, open up. Half moon. Transition, especially here in this equanimity series, this balancing series. It's just as much a part of the work. Yeah, you can bring your bottom hand up to your heart center or again, play with shifting your vision, your drishti up to the ceiling. One more breath in. Forward fold. Take a couple of breaths here in your forward fold. Come back to your ujjayi breath. Roll up to standing, samastitihi. The dancer, leave your left foot grounded, bend your right knee, and grab the inside of your right foot with your right hand, or even your ankle or shin. Let your gaze guide you, hinge from your hips. Take your lifted foot into the hand where they are bound. Great balance there. Regenerate your breath. Right? It's easy in challenging postures to hold our breath with control. Come back up to standing. Release your foot. Begin again on the second side, dancer. Ground into your right foot. Extend your right fingertips beyond the top of your mat. Reach your back toes or your back shin towards the back of the wall. Three more breaths. I draw in and create full expression out whatever full expression is today. Release after your breath is complete. Urdhva Hastasana, extended mountain, reach up tall. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Extended mountain, rise all the way up. Move into that mini back bend. Press your hips forward. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Inhale through your nose. Open your mouth. This time, stick out your tongue. Really get into your lion's breath out. And right back to your ujjayi breath. Lift your right leg long behind you. Three point. Draw your knee into your nose, cheetah. Warrior one. And straighten your right knee. Step your back foot about a third of the way up your mat. Set up for pyramid pose. So the width between your feet can vary a lot from person to person. You can really go as wide as you can handle and still keep your back heel grounded into the mat. You can fold to a flat spine and hold here for a little bit more core action. Or like Chloe is doing, you can fold all the way over your front leg and really release into your lower back. Stretch a little deeper into your hamstrings. Good. 
Bring the vinyasa back into the stillness. The default often is to get where we're going and then just hang out there. What happens when you continue to do the work, when you continue to match the effort in the ease? Create space for something new. Twisting triangle, lower your left fingertips to the floor, reach your right fingertips to the ceiling. A block can be helpful here to lift the earth a little bit up to you. Try to maintain square hips to the top of your mat. Really twist through your torso. One more breath in. Press the crown of your head forward. Extend your spine long. Exhale, chaturanga. Plant your hands. Step back to vinyasa or push back to your downward facing dog. Reach your left leg long behind you, three point. Cheetah, draw your knee into your nose. This time you might even be able to touch your forehead to your knee. Warrior one. Straighten your right knee, set up for your pyramid pose. Option to bring your hands to reverse namaste. Prayer behind you, or even grab opposite elbows. Root into the foundation of your feet. And draw your left hip back, press your right hip forward. And move your attention to the foundation of your core lock, your Uddiyana Bandha. Stay active through your center line. Revolved triangle. Bring awareness right back to your hips. Draw your Right hip back, press your left hip forward. Inhale, lengthen from your sit bones out through the crown of your head. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Inhale. Lion's breath out, release. Inhale, shift forward, high plank. Low plank, exhale. Upward facing dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. High plank, breathe in, really lengthen. Low plank, lower. Upward facing dog, this time hold it for a few of your breath cycles. Take the time to really set up your upward facing dog. Draw your belly in, pull your hips forward towards the top of your mat. Downward facing dog, pull your core in and up. Bend your knees, look forward. Float your feet to your hands, roll onto your sit bones and down to your back. Bridge. If you've got a block nearby and you know you like supported bridge as an option, just kind of make sure that's nearby. Otherwise, walk your feet back until your heels are close to your sit bones. Press your hips to the ceiling. Lift and spread your toes. Just notice for a breath or so how that changes the energy or the action of the pose. Grow 
rotate your inner thighs down towards your mat. Lift your chin away from your chest. Lower down. Take a breath in. Let that breath go. Bridge. Or supported bridge, if that's what's calling to you right now, you're going to still get lots of work and lots of action by placing that block at your sacrum and letting it support some of your weight. If you've got space, roll your shoulders underneath your back body. You might find a bind with your hands or use your arms for a little more leverage to lift your hips up. Draw your thoracic spine in. Stay here or press up into wheel. Bring your hands next to your ears. If you're working on wheel in your practice, you can also press to the crown of your head. And then from there, straighten your arms. Drive your chest towards the space behind you. Tuck your chin, lower down. Big breath in. Open up, exhale out. Be a yes. One more wheel or bridge. Come on up three of your breath cycles to ignite your practice, your day, your week, whatever it is, your life. Breathe big. Tuck your chin, lower down after your third breath or your third cycle. Soup to Baddha Konasana. Bring the soles of your feet to touch. Let your knees open wide. Bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly. Go ahead and close your eyes. Move your attention to your third eye center. Come back to your Ujjayi breath. Let it be a reminder that you are here and alive and well. And let it bring ease to all the effort you just put forth. Happy baby, grab the outer blade edges of your feet or your ankles. You can also grab behind your knees. Take the bind in a place that allows your sacrum to stay grounded into the mat. Rock from side to side or be in stillness. Get long through your spine. Get long through your neck. And reach both feet straight up to the ceiling, moving into a little bit of stability work, a little bit of core work. Because if you haven't realized it already in your practice, your core, it stabilizes the rest of the postures that you're working through. Lower your right leg down to a hover. You can lift your shoulders up to see your extended foot or leave them rested on the mat and switch and switch. And you keep switching with your breath. Draw your belly down towards your mat. Continue to breathe deeply. I feel like growing up, anytime I did core work, I was like trained to just breathe through it super fast and move through it super fast. What happens when you slow it down here? Lift both feet back up to the ceiling. Lower just your right leg down to a hover. Bring your hands to clasp in front of you. Pulse up to your left toes. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Switch your legs. Pulse 10, 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower both feet. Bring your knees into your chest. Rock from side to side. Rock and roll yourself forwards and backwards. Come all the way up into boat pose. So really find your sit bones, get grounded into your sit bones. Few options here. You can drop your toes for a little extra balance. Lift your shins parallel with the floor or extend your legs long. Options with your hands as well. Take them big or use them behind your thighs for a little extra support. Sometimes I like to remind myself to hug my outer shins in by squeezing my hands into my shins. But lift your chest up towards your toes and grab your block. Squeeze your block, twist right, tap, twist left, tap. Move with your breath. Keep squeezing your legs together. Draw your belly in and up for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, hold it center, 1, squeeze your block, squeeze your legs, and release everything. Roll back onto your mat. Supta Baddha Konasana or happy baby. Take a breath in. Feel your chest and belly rise. Yeah, and empty out. Inhale, fill up. Open your mouth, sigh out. Draw your knees into your chest. Rock and roll yourself either to seated or go ahead and make your way to downward facing dog. You're going to set up for half pigeon. With your right leg forward. So square your hips to the top of your mat. Lengthen your back leg. If you have a lot of space underneath your right sit bone or right thigh, you can bring a block underneath somewhere in that area to help out. So I typically like to encourage in this pose to at least take two or three breaths upright in your half pigeon before you move into sleeping pigeon. Just going back to that idea of discovering new things when we don't rush to get to the destination. If you're moving into the folded version of the pose, stay long in your spine. Stay intentional in your breath. Be aware of your drishti. Even if your gaze moves to that internal third eye center, be present to it. If all of your attention right now is moving to those places in your body that are feeling resistance, Use that attention. Breathe deeper into those pockets. Or shift your attention to somewhere entirely different in the posture. Where your attention goes, energy flows. That's true when you're in here on your mat practicing or when you're out there in the world. We have a choice. Most of the time anyway. On where we put our attention. Where we allow our energy to flow. 
Inhale, come back up to half pigeon if you're in the fold. Take a breath in, move your gaze up to the ceiling. Draw your upper arm bones back. And then as you exhale, you can move through a vinyasa or a down dog split or just shift and switch sides. There are some days in my practice where I want a little more freedom to move and explore. And there are other days in my practice where I want to be pretty essential and just see what happens when I take out all the extra stuff. Neither is right or wrong. As long as you're aware. As long as you are willing to step out of your comfort zone, out of your default, to see what's possible, it's all valid. If you feel like you have a little more length in your back leg, you can tuck your back toes and lift your leg up a little. Play with that extension. Inhale, move back up to an upright half pigeon. Take a full breath in, look up. Draw the tips of your shoulder blades in towards your spine. Exhale, plant your hands. You can move through a vinyasa again or a down dog split. Or you can stay seated on your mat and go ahead and spin around for Paschimottanasana. Seated forward fold. And walk your sit bones back towards the back of your mat. And a little bit of a forward tilt in your pelvis. Inhale, your fingertips tall. As you exhale, fold about a third of the way. Stay long and strong in your spine. If your hamstrings are on fire, that's not a bad thing. If it's too much fire, maybe bring a little bend to your knees. Inhale, extend, exhale, fold another third of the way. Keep your gaze out past your feet. One more breath in. And on your exhale, go ahead and land your hands. Surrender. And drop the crown of your head towards your shins. This is that opportunity and stillness to still create flow. To really tune in to those small victories or pockets of space. You can access when you continue to maintain your breath and pair it with your movement. Rise up to seated. Reverse tabletop. Plant your hands behind your hips. I like to take my hands as wide as my mat here. Move your feet to hips width distance, just like you did in your bridge pose. Press into your foundation. Lift up. And if it's comfortable, let the crown of your head drop back towards your mat. Squeeze your thoracic spine in, squeeze your glutes in, lift everything up to the ceiling. Exhale, tuck your chin, lower down. 
And go ahead and extend long on your mat. And close with a supine twist. And an opportunity to get your feet higher than your heart. And drop your knees to the right side. Shift your gaze to the left. In your twist, draw your belly into your spine. See if that gives you a little bit more room to ring out. Come back through center. Twist in the opposite direction. And aim to keep your shoulders grounded into your mat. Come back through center. Inversion option to set up for waterfall, which is a block underneath your sacrum with your feet extended straight up to the ceiling. Shoulder stand or headstand or handstand, always an option here as well. For shoulder stand, bring your knees to your chest and start in your plow position. Walk your elbows in towards each other. Bring your hands to your low back for support. And then extend your feet up on top of your hips. Notice if your toes are over top of your face and really press them away from your face, more on top of your hips. Drop your toes for plow. Let them reach towards the floor behind your head. If they make contact, you can release your hands. Otherwise, continue to support your low back. Press your sit bones up to the ceiling. Bend your knees next to your ears. Really begin to Curve into your lower spine. Press back out to plow and then slowly begin to unroll onto your mat. Set up for your final resting pose. Just like that first child's pose, take up space. Let your feet fall open wide. And tuck your shoulders underneath your back body. Close your eyes. Take another breath in through your nose, a big breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, sigh out. Shavasana.
Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Inhale, reach your arms overhead, full body stretch. Exhale, draw your knees into your chest and roll to either side. Cradle your head and neck and your bicep. Take a moment here in this posture of new beginning. Recall your intention. And decide if that's the same intention that will serve you as you move beyond your practice today. Or if a new intention has surfaced. Make a commitment. To how you will. Move and function. When you leave your mat. Press up to seated. Bring your hands. Anjali Mudra. You can keep your gaze at your third eye center or down on your fingertips. Together, let's take a breath in and a big sigh out. The light in me sees and honors the light in each and every one of you. Namaste.